So, Alex, in this day and age for running backs, they say the second round is the new first round. The third round is the new second round. So what does that mean for Michael Carter, who went at the 402? <laughs> for those of you that like to round, I'm not a big rounding guy, but if you like to round, you could you could say Carter was a late third round pick, 402. I mean, come on, give him the benefit of the doubt, right, Alex? We have to love him in this landing spot. I don't know about that stuff. I mean, to me, fourth round is the new fourth round. And the 402, say what you want, sure, it's so close to a late third. It really doesn't make a difference, but you're waiting a whole extra day to get picked. So Michael Carter went to bed Friday night without a landing spot, had to wait till Saturday. And to me, even as you get to that mid to late third round, those, those running backs start to get a little bit sketchy. They start to get a little bit questionable. You start to wonder, whether they're going to hit in the league, that hit rate really starts to taper off. So for Carter, even if it was, you know, mid to late third round, I'd have my concerns. But the fact that he did make it to round four definitely raises some red flags for me, for Michael Carter, because just last season they took Pirine in the fourth round. So the landing spot looks good on the surface. But as we really dig in here, we're going to see that it might not be, you know, as sunshine and rainbows as we think it's going to be for Michael Carter as a rookie and for his career. So we have him as our consensus RB4 in this class. And the hype is real, man. When we're on the on the clock in these rookie drafts in our dynasty leagues, we got guys taking Michael Carter early second round. We were just talking before we hit record here. That is a little rich for our blood, but let's get into why that is. Because I think on the surface, especially when you look at a pretty limited running back class, Carter seems pretty appealing, especially if you're a running back needy roster. And I actually do think it's a decent landing spot for for a few reasons. One, Michael Carter's part of a full rebuild. Front office wipe. There's no Adam Gase. There's no Sam Darnold. We got Robert Sala in as head coach, bringing in Mike LaFleur, who spent last three years as the 49ers passing game coordinator. And I do believe if, if Michael Carter, the running back that this front office has drafted, if he starts producing, I think he will get the RB1 role potentially very early in the season. They got Zach Wilson at quarterback. Even if he's not the next Mahomes, that's still an upgrade at QB for the Jets. His backfield competition is the the guy you named, LaMichael Pirine, was a fourth-round pick last year. As a rookie, he had 64 carries, 3.6 yards per carry, 11 receptions, just kind of an inefficient rusher. I think he has decent pass catching chops, but nothing to write home about. Does not profile as an electric or a dynamic athlete based on what he did through the pro day combine process before getting drafted. And then we got Ty Johnson, who was a sixth round pick in 2019 by the Detroit Lions. He's another guy he showed in college and in the league that he actually can be an explosive runner who can be serviceable in the passing game. 54 carries, 4.7 yards per attempt, 16 receptions. So this could be an ugly three-headed monster in this backfield, but this could also easily be Michael Carter's backfield in year one with the new front office. He's the highest drafted running back in this backfield now outside of Tevin Coleman, who's pretty much toast at this point in his career. And Carter makes guys miss. He's a good pass catcher. He's a little bit undersized at five foot eight, 202 pounds. No early declare, but, but just a few months after turning 18, he saw over 15% of the University of North Carolina's offensive production as a freshman while being second on the depth chart. And throughout his entire career, even as a freshman, Michael Carter was one of the most efficient running backs in the country. And then as a senior, he was splitting carries and actually outproduced another NFL caliber running back, a second round running back in Javante Williams that we also just saw go in this draft. Now I tweeted out, you can hit us up at Double Moose Sports, always on there chopping it up with you guys. Also hit us up in our Discord, link to that down below, always in there helping folks with trades, startups. But I did tweet out on day three that the Jets were a sneaky landing spot for a running back. And part of that was because the left side of their offensive line is, is pretty stacked. They got a 2019 11th overall pick, our boy Big Ticket, Makai Becton. They also got one of the best guards in this class, Elijah Vera Tucker out of USC, who they traded up for at 14th overall in the draft. We know Zach Wilson's blind side is going to be protected. There's going to be some running lanes for, for Michael Carter in this offense. The only worry 
is that Michael Carter is just a serviceable yet replaceable, upgradable running back. And as a fourth round RB, he is playing for his job. I mean, he, he has the James Robinson dilemma from this season. If, if you win games, the team's going to have a lower draft pick. If your team tanks, they could easily draft another running back with higher draft capital next year, who is a three down workhorse and is just a better athlete the Michael Carter. So I, I think his back is going to be against the wall. He's going to have to produce out the gate. But if he starts to put up some solid numbers with this rebuilt Jets offense, I think people are going to go nuts for this guy. So I like the value. I have him as a mid-second in super flex rookie drafts. Alex, what are your thoughts on, on my Carter takes? I agree with, with most of what you're saying. I agree that for Michael Carter, if he's going to go in the fourth round, the landing spot – I don't know if it gets much better than this. He will have an opportunity, something he wouldn't get if he went to another another team in the fourth round. Look at Chuba Hubbard going to the Carolina Panthers round four. I still like Chuba. Uh, if anything were to happen to CMC, who knows? Maybe they'll pull back on CMC's workload a little bit with a 17-game season after the injuries last year. But think about a Chuba Hubbard in round four versus Michael Carter and the touch opportunity in these offenses. It's night and day. So in terms of landing spot, 100%, you're spot on. And most people talking about Michael Carter in this draft are spot on. But I do have one problem with the way people are talk talking about Michael Carter right now. And it just comes down to reality versus the expectations. When these rookies get drafted, we get this rookie hype. We fall in love with these guys. And we only tend to look at the upside. With Michael Carter, it's like, oh, he has so much opportunity. He's the only back there. He's going to, and I know you're not saying this, but this is what I'm hearing. He's going to come in and be the lead back in that offense, workhorse role. Like He has that opportunity. I don't think he's walking into a, a workhorse role like people think. Let's rewind just one year to 2019, 2020, when LaMichael P. Ryan was taken in the first round or the fourth round. Same round as Michael Carter, given I like Michael Carter better as a prospect. But P. Ryan had fourth round draft capital. He came into a backfield after Le'Veon Bell was cut that had Frank Gore, Ty Johnson and no one else to compete with for touches. Well, Michael P. Ryan should have been a workhorse, according to people's logic from this season. And what did P. Ryan do? He gave us 232 yards for 3.6 yards per carry. He fell flat on his face. I don't even know if P. Ryan makes the roster in 2021. So, look, I do like Carter better than P. Ryan. I think he's going to seize more of an opportunity than P. Ryan did last year. But just because there aren't any other running backs of consequence in New York doesn't mean Michael Carter's getting a workhorse role. You mentioned the size at 5'8", 201. I mean, this Jets team still has Ty Johnson. You mentioned they brought in Tevin Coleman. They still have P. Ryan for now. One of these guys is going to get cut. I said it's going to be P. Ryan. That's my prediction. But this, you said it's going to be a weird timeshare this season in 2021 if anything i think ty johnson is going to be the lead runner mm. he showed solid nfl production 4.7 yards per carry in his opportunities last season he's still only 23 years old ran a 4 4 40 coming out of college they were comparable in college yards per carry so if anything i think ty johnson is going to get the lion's share of touches on the ground in this backfield michael carter if anything to me can come in be this change of pace back get a little bit of the receiving role but I don't think Michael Carter can step in and just run with a workhorse role for the New York Jets. And that's what concerns me. People are going to overdraft him looking at that potential opportunity, and it's just not going to happen. Uh, at least I don't project it to happen. And you mentioned it. After 2021, what happens if the Jets go sign a free agent, draft someone on day one or day two? Michael Carter at that point is relegated to just being a backup. And I look at Michael Carter, where he is, slightly undersized. I kind of compare him just physically to Clyde edwards Zelaire. But he's not as bursty. He's not as agile. He has way less of a pass catching production profile from college. It's just, and even in Clyde, Clyde edwards Alaire's case, in the best offensive football, people have questions about him. And this is another running back with first round draft capital. And we're still not putting CEH over DeAndre Swift, J.K. Dobbins. I have Trey Sermon firmly over Michael Carter in this class. Long story short with Carter, we do like the landing spot below consensus on the talent and the upside that we believe Michael Carter truly does have. But if he comes out the gate swinging, if your team needs a running back, you're sitting there mid-second round, I don't mind taking the shot on it. But if I want a running back in this class, I'm trading up and I'm going to go get 
one of the top three guys, Najee Harris, Travis Etienne, or Javante Williams.